On today's show, we're talking white balance. So what we've got here today is a white balance filter. So some of you probably don't know what a white balance filter is, and that's okay. But for those of you that take a lot of photos and you're constantly in your editors trying to get that perfect white balance going, these things can obviously save you a ton of time. Sitting at your editor, constantly trying to figure out exactly what the light was at the time you took the shot and trying to get the white balance perfect on each and every one is just a complete and total hassle. So this little item does a lot of stuff to help eliminate not only a bunch of confusion, but a bunch of time spent editing that you could spend time shooting. And for some of you more experienced photographers, you're probably going to have some experience with a much more expensive type of white balance filter, such as the Expo Disc. But I just wanted to show you what this small, very cheap and lightweight alternative can actually do for you. So essentially, I set this thing up to show you all how not to use this thing. This is me setting up in front of a subject and I did this on auto white balance. And then I put the white balance filter in front of the camera and took a custom white balance setting. As you can see, it didn't change it a whole lot. There's no dramatic change in the color whatsoever. A little bit warmer, but not much. I took another shot, looked down at the concrete. This is on auto white balance from the Sony a6000. It looks fairly good. And then I use the custom white balance setting. It almost it almost kind of looks a little bit warmer to me. And it seemed to show that in the histogram as well. Again, this is on auto white balance. This is probably one of the few outdoor photos that I took that the white balance filter actually did what it was supposed to do. Then I took the shot with the custom setting and it honestly, it cooled down the highlights so that the highlights didn't look so yellowish and warm. I also wanted to give skin tones a fair shot out in the open shaded daylight. This is on auto white balance on the A6000. And then I use the custom white balance setting with the card. And as you can see, my skin honestly looks a little bit more warm, a little bit more tan than I think that it actually was. Next, I moved indoors to a mixed lighting setting. This is on auto white balance. I had tungsten lights up above me with some daylight coming in from the picture right and this is with the custom white balance setting after I shot it through the white balance card. Honestly, not much of a difference as far as my eyes can tell. So up to this point, this is how I've actually been shooting it. I've been standing there pointing my camera in the direction of the subject and then I've been putting the white balance filter in front of the camera. Now this is actually the wrong way to do it because you're, what you're doing is you're allowing the light to hit your subject and then come back into the lens through the gray card. But this is how you actually want it to be. You want to stand next to your subject and you want to take a white balance reading from the perspective of the light coming toward your subject, not bouncing back from your subject. Now this is where the white balance card really shines. This is auto white balance with an indoor setting and this is just straight from the camera. What we did is then we took another white balance reading from the perspective of the camera coming toward me as the subject. And as you can tell, it is a completely different look. Okay, so to some of you, this may not seem like that big of a deal. And for the most part, most of you are always gonna use auto white balance and you're just gonna try and fix whatever color issues you have in post. But the problem with that is that when you go into your editor and you start working on your pictures, you lose a lot of detail. You, you, you lose a lot of color information while you're trying to switch to the correct color temperature. So in order to just avoid all of that, using a white balance card can save you not only a lot of time, but also a lot of headache and hassle of trying to figure out exactly what the color temperature was, what kind of lights were in the room, and is it even gonna seem right in the first place? First thing you wanna do is you want to be in the position of your subject. So walk over to your subject with your white balance filter. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold up your camera and you're gonna shoot into the direction that you are actually gonna be shooting from. This will allow the camera to get a reasonable reading on what the light is gonna feel like and be like from the perspective of your subject. 
The next thing you want to do is you're going to have to set up some settings in your camera. Now, for each different camera manufacturer, it is going to be a little bit different. And although I can't cover all of them, I happen to be working on a Sony, but the principles that I'm going to show you here real quick are pretty much going to apply to all of them. So let's check those out. Make sure that you go into your menu settings and you want to get out of the auto white balance. Let me go ahead and switch to the function that get me there faster. Okay, so generally most people set it on auto or they set it on daylight or the shade or cloudy, whichever one that they think best fits uh, the situation. But the camera still just doesn't know 100% for sure. So it's just better to just go ahead and do it manually. So what you do is you will go down to the very bottom, which says custom setup. You're going to hit set. And what you're going to do is you have your gray card here and you're going to put it over the lens. And what the, what the filter does is it diffuses the light to such an extent that it basically turns all the light coming into the sensor 18% gray, much like a gray card. So you set the, uh, the filter directly in front and then you take a shot. And right after you hit set, now you have a custom white balance. My custom white balance was 5,000 Kelvin. So now that we've got it set up in a new direction with a little bit more color besides just the black, white, and gray, go back into your function settings. And right now the custom setting is 5,000 K. We can go to set again. Then we are going to put the filter in front of our camera. And then we're gonna take another meter reading so now that we pointed in the new direction, as you can see, we now have a new setting of 4,700 Kelvin. When you finally get out of this menu and you've got your custom white balance set, what you're looking for is you want your exposure reading to be exactly zero. You don't want to be overexposed. You don't want to be underexposed. Generally, if you have your ISO set into auto mode, that's not going to happen anyway. It will automatically try to adjust for a perfect exposure. But if you ever go out of ISO auto mode and you actually try to set, say like ISO 100, then you should see your meter readings either going up or down from perfect exposure, at least according to your camera's metering system. Uh, if you point it right over here towards a straight gray card, and again, we'll have to reset the custom uh, Kelvin setting. So let's do that again. And now that we've got our Kelvin uh, custom white balance uh, set to 5000 K with a green plus one, if we now take a shot, uh, it, this probably won't focus. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it on manual focus and just go ahead and take this shot. Look at that nice, perfect spike right up the middle. Your reds, your greens and your blues all perfectly line up in order to create 18% gray. And that is exactly what we're looking for. So there you have it. There you go, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really had no idea just exactly how difficult this topic was going to be to try to explain exactly how uh, to get this custom white balance uh, with this grade card when I first set out to do it. But if you did happen to find any of this information useful, please give me a thumbs up. Share the video with your friends and on the social medias things and such and whatnots and also please don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you can be one of the first to see all the new videos that i release at any rate thanks again for stopping right here at the photo video show i'm your host mark bucket and i will see you guys again on the next one